So welcome friends, we will now start with lecture 6. So in this lecture, we will try to cover aesthetic design, design principles, product message, visual design and elements of visual design. So first let us understand what is aesthetic design. Aesthetic design is a branch of philosophy that deals with the nature and the value of art, objects and experience. This is the definition. So the other way around is aesthetic design is concerned with the use of principles of beauty and psychological expectations of the user. For example, people would now like to have a blue light instead of a red light. Red light try to create some amount of anxiety, excitement with the ambience. So what people nowadays they suggest is even the night lamp what we use in our home, they would like to have it with a soothing color, something like a blue light, yellow light, green light. So they say please do not use yellow light because it is not, it is going to psychologically depress people or psychologically influence people. So what are the various factors affecting the aesthetic design? One is going to be the form and form slash shape. So form slash shape also has a psychological impact. So the form slash shapes, form or shapes, it suggests which kind of product a human do like. For example, a cylindrical one, a prismatic one. So which one does it like? It helps to finalize the methodology for the use of a basic shape size and a transition of one element to the other. So that is about uh, form and shape. The next thing is the basic element along with the size and shape are originated from the basic concepts. The model making and ease for production is the other two things which are very important as far as shapes. I discussed earlier also, we never have a square hole. We always have a hole which is circular. Why? Because from the manufacturing point of view, circular holes are easy to produce. We always would like to have rounded edges. Why? Because from the concept of assembling, we would like to have the edges to be round off or a small radius to be given. And so here, the form plays a very, very important role. So when you try to make a product, you cannot have disproportionate ratios between different parts inside one product. So that is what is the form and shape which is very important. Next one is the form transition. Form transition means a product, generally a product is made of a combination of several parts and these parts can take different forms or uh, shapes. Okay? So the form transition basically defines the way the change occurs in the design from one shape to the other. For example, when you try to take a billet, this billet which is taken from the iron ore, iron, you, iron ore, you melt the iron ore, you make a big billet, from this billet is rolled and it is made out, made into sheets. So what happens? There is a form transition happening. So a billet is now converted maybe into a rod or into a shaft or it can be a thin sheet. So converting a shape from one shape to another in uh, which is more focused towards going towards the product shape. So that is form transition. So generally what happens, we try to change the shape. Maybe a cube is changed into a flat plate, a cube is changed into a rod. So that is what is the form transition. Next one is the proportions. Proportions, there are two important things. One is phi and this is not pi, this is phi and the other one is the fractal design. So this too is uh, very important. So uh, what is phi? Phi is a irrational mathematical number. Phi 
is a irrational mathematical mathematical constant which often takes a value of 1.618 so it is a the ratio is a unique property where when we take two unit length scales for example we take two unit length scales one is a the other is b and this is a plus b okay so you have two lengths a and b so this is a plus b so what we uh, this is nothing but b by a equal to a plus b by b is the ratio so this is this is how this 1.618 comes into existence. The color plays another important role because the contrast of the color is very important. Basically, if you see there are only three colors. So, now what you do is you try to add, delete, combine and try to create multiple colors and then the contrast is nothing but the brightness and the dullness whatever it is. So, these are certain things which are very very uh, important. So, contrast, similar, graduation and separation these are certain properties integrated into color. So, aesthetic design, color also plays an important role. The texture also try to play an important role. Texture is nothing but the finish, the again here contrast, similarity, graduation and separation comes into existence. The product graphics plays a very important role. How do you write the product name? If you see, today there is a big boon in writing the movie name that is uh, write a how do we write the name in the font the size the style so that it impresses the eye and people have a look of it when you prepare a document we always try to look at the style and the basic psych then apart from that the inclined lines and the surfaces all these factors are part of aesthetic design which is very very important so for choosing the aesthetic design, these are the factors and all the factors play an important role. For example, if you look at this pen, so this pen has a length, it has a diameter and it has switches or pointers whatever it is, all these things have to be in some proposition. You cannot have a longer uh, 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 switches so that it can, it, can, it can try to hinder your other activities. So, and the tip of the pen also has to be as precise as possible such that it can focus it to, a, to close to one pixel. The principal designs, so first is functionality, we have dealt more or a uh, lot of things in the last lecture about function and functionalities. Next is concepts, in concepts we will have modular design, themes and logos, balance we will have symmetric, axis symmetric and radial, uh, then directions emphasis and contrast, then we have juxtapositions. Juxtapositions are, are nothing but a repetition of a unit variation or a pattern. For example, you take a calculator, in a calculator you will have multiple all these numbers which are arranged in sequence and if you look at a keyboard, the alphabets are never arranged in sequence. So, it is all how, what should be the size and how does it affect the product. So, unity, variation, pattern and discard are nothing but juxtapositions which is also a principal design. Then rhythms, you will have contrast, similarity, graduation and separation, ratios and proposition and the last will be inclined curved lines and surfaces. So, these are the 8 design principles which have to be followed in developing a successful product. So, what is product message? Product message means it is a form, flow or follow function. So, it is a form which follows a function which is very important. So, in, in terms of concepts, form, form is nothing but the shape and here we are trying to link it with a function, form, function. Then the next one is lightness to weight. So, the balance, base, shape, size, color are the next product message, stability the line balances etc are next speed and motion which is uh, direction and dominance is also a product message 
power and strength and dominance. So, these are some of the product messages which are to be considered for making a successful product. So, now let us get into visual design. Visual design is a method of technical knowledge developed rapidly by following a scientific discovery. So, visual design does not mean it, it happens randomly of its choice, there is a scientific approach to make it appealing. Visual design is an applied art whereby the principles of visual communication are used for effective design of the product. By looking at the color, by looking at the style, you will try to understand the emergency or this, the impact what it has with respect to the product. So, visual design is an applied art where the principle of visual communication are used for effective design of a product. For example, when you look at a mobile app, you will see a, a smiling photo there. That means to say, okay, so this means to say I am happy with the customer. You can see a same a design which is drawn or a color which is drawn, something like this and it talks about saying that I am not happy or you can say that I am, uh, you can also make symbols like this. So, here it is an art it is an applied art where the principles of visual communication are used for effective design of the product. The basic element of visual design is nothing but a form, a content, arrangement, lights and color. So, all these things are part of visual design. This point is very, very important. So, where in which we talk about a form, the shape of the product, content of the product. So, what all has to be there and then arrangement. Arrangement is very, very important. For example, uh, today people do lot of eye tracking studies to find out if we put six colors, where does the eye track first? What is the font size it track first? What is the speed it tracks first? And this is very, very important when you start, when you look at uh, product development or the most prominent industry which uses visual communication is advertisements. So, here they do visual design, form, content arrangement, light and color, all these things are basic elements of visual design. The emotions, note it down, the emotions that drive visual communications are seductions, convictions and inspirations. So, these are emotions, seduction that means to say sleep, conviction and inspiration. The visual techniques scale, cropping, juxtaposition, abstraction, magnification, orientation and typography are visual techniques. This is also very, very important. Please make a note. So, as I said, writing the name, writing the name of a product, say for example, people write R and then this is one way of writing it. People write like this R and writing it. People write like this and then they make to write the name. So, all these are the same name, but it looks like which one is attracting and appealing. Again, here it is on a white background blue, white background red and what should be this A. So, people can keep writing. There are humpty number of ways by just by writing this name. And when you write so much of names at a very far off distance, how does it attract eyes of a customer? Because ultimately it is what impression the customer has by looking at the product at that instant. So, after he buys then comes the functional aspect, but what impresses is important. And please do understand this is not going to be a unique solution. For example, a taste what I like, you might not like. A taste what color what I like, you might not like. So, it is very clear from all these things that there is nothing called as a unique solution. Every time you understand the customer, look at the requirements, look at the ambience, look at the market and then try to tweak the shape, form of the product and then try to use all these techniques such that you bring in the emotion in conveying to the customer. So, the basic elements of design are you have a point, two points joined together is a line, 
then you have a color, then you have shape, you have size, you have mass and you have change. So, all these things are basic elements of design. This is all basic elements of design in terms of aesthetic design. So, look at point. So, point is the most basic of element. So, you always start anywhere with a point, right. So, that is what we say basic element manifested in the material world with just slightly more gesto than a mathematical point. So, you can construct a complete visualization just by assembling the dots. So, you look at it, there are so many dots and you can see by arranging those dots, playing with the contrast in those dots, you try to convey a figure there or I would put it in a different manner, a computer, a pixel is nothing but a dot. In a screen, a pixel is nothing but a dot. So, it is a basic element, how many pixels to be activated and with what is the color in each pixel tries to communicate to you a design or a pattern okay, or a figure whatever you intend to do. So, it is an atomic component of visual work that means to say it is the smallest one, dimensioning perspective and a region of the focus for your eye of the for the eyes of the viewers, uh, more number of points creates a shape. A single point does not create anything, two points create a line, more number of points creates a shape that is what we are trying to say. So, an analogy for this point is nothing but a pixel, a pixel in a big screen. Next is a line. Line is a mark made by moving point and having psychological impact according to its direction, weight and the variation in its direction and weight. So, the direction in which it moves, for example, these things move in a straight line, here you see a radius moving, here you see a radius moving. Okay. So, the direction, the thickness of the line is the weight, whatever we are talking about and its impact with respect to visual. The function in both visual and verbal ways, this plays a very important role. Please understand, when you try to do design, right? you cannot speak, a picture speaks 1000 words, a designer's picture speaks 10,000 words because he has chosen the apt color, apt shape, apt size, apt line and apt geometry form to communicate information. It acts as a symbolic language, line is acts as a symbolic language, a line can be combined to give a form or a shape. That means to say when you have a shape, I can discretize into several lines and then I can try to give a form uh, and a shape. So, now if I want to convert this circle, I would have done like this lines and then I do it, whatever it is. So, I can say for example, I can create a circle, I can create hexagon patterns and this can also be joined under or a circle, whatever it is. So, I can discretize a form uh, into several lines. So, line can uh, can be combined to give a form and a shape to the product. Okay. So, this is what it is. So, when I go back, uh, I reiterate going back, these are the basic elements of design, point, line, color, shape, size, mass and change. So, the next one is color. Color is something very, very, very interesting. The general term of for the quality of a color is hue, intensity and the value observed. What is hue? Name of the color like red, green, blue etc. is hue. There is another term which is called as chroma which talks about the intensity, strength or saturation of a color distinguishing the chromatic color from black and white. It is chroma. Then the third one is saturation. The degree of vividness of a hue from its concentration used synchronously with chroma is saturation. And the last one is value, the value ranging from light to dark including white, grey and black. Colors can be evaluated on the basis of 0 for black and 10 for white and then you try to give a range for the colors 
so that you can try to have a proper color. For example, if you take a pixel, it will have a grayscale value. A gray scale, so, in this grayscale value, you can try to say what amount of basic colors R, G, B are there. So, that is what is the values which you are talking about. So, hue is name of the color like red, blue, green, right? And then chroma is nothing but the intensity, strength, or saturation of a color. Distinguishing the chromatic color from black and white. Saturation is the degree of vividness for hue, and the values are between 0 to 10 or 0 to 100. Generally, higher values are considered to be light and lower values are considered to be 0. So, terminologies to be understand more in color is tint. A tint is given hue with added white color. So, basically it is white and then you have a dark color, right. So, now tint is given hue with added white is a tint. A tone is hue given with added dark is tone. A shade is given hue with added complements. So, I have put all the figures here. So, this terminology is again this is very important. Last uh, slide we studied about color, we studied about hue, chroma, saturation value and the next thing is this tint, tone and shade. Tint is white moving towards white, hue moving towards white tone is hued moving towards dark and shade is going towards an added complement. The representation uh, using hue, a cool color meaning blue, green, uh, silver or we will just say blue, green, silver which is nothing but which gives you a soothing look like something like a calm. So, a blue color shirt, a green color shirt or a silver color, a blue color car, a green color car, a silver color car. This is the impact when you look at a car, the color giving you an impact a feel. Warm colors are red, pink, yellow, gold and orange. So, it is basically nothing but if you if you look at any figure, if you look at any figure in cartoon or if, if a figure has to convey a message without words. So, then what they do is they try to draw an, a, a boundary and then they try to give a color. So, the color which they give inside gives you a feel that it is hot it is alarming. So, that is what is given here. A mixed cool and a warm color means purple, lavender, green or torogish. So, if you use these colors, it gives you a mixed cool feel. A neutral color feeling is brown, ivory, gray, white and black and biggie. So, these are a neutral colors, they do not have any feeling. So, now you look at it just by giving a color to a product, you try to create an impression about the product to a customer. Just by looking at the color, a designer tries to say, oh, this product gives me a soothing look. So, that is nothing but a cool color. So, choosing the color, that means the representation of you, choosing the color to meet out the customer's requirement. So, there are certain countries where they are fond of red color, certain countries are fond out of green colors. So, you can see at their flag, national flag and understand and people try to say the national flag color tries to convey the feelings of the people there. So, let us look at color. The color can be classified into primary color, secondary color, complementary color, contrast color and similar colors. What are the basic colors? Basic colors are red blue and yellow. Okay. These three are basic colors. When I try to mix red and blue, what I get a color is nothing but something like purple. Okay. So, when I try to mix yellow and blue, the in between color yeah, what I get is green. If I try to mix yellow and red, what I try to get is orange, right. So, these colors which are in between, which are in between, so these colors are called as secondary colors. By mixing these two colors in certain proportion, I try to get these colors. What are complementary colors? Complementary colors are between these two, I try to get a new mixture are called as complementary colors. These are called as complementary colors. 
contrasting colors are I just opposite to this color what you have is contrasting colors. People try to wear contrasting colors. So, people try to do this is blue, yellow. So, then you can have yellow and then red. So, in between. So, here you can see some contrasting colors yellow and blue, blue and red. So, these are contrasting colors. Similar colors are those colors which are besides each other, besides each is called as similar colors. So, in this color wheel you have to choose primary colors of your choice primary, secondary, then you have complementary, contrast and similar and all these things try to influence the given impression or influence the opinion about the product to buy. So, many a times you can see uh, when you buy a soap you will see a background color and then you will see a name written in a different color. So, these two color choice is very important and this is basically decided by a visual design expert. The shapes are the next one. So, if you go back what the, uh, this is uh, what we studied was this. So, points we have completed, line we have completed, color we have completed. Now, we will try to look at shapes. So, shapes are nothing but geometric shapes natural shapes and abstract shapes. Geometric shapes are predominantly man-made shapes. So, here you will see simple geometry. What are the simple geometry? You will have a line, you will have a dot, you will have a line, you will have a circle, right? Several of these uh, lines joined together can form a prismatic object, whatever it is. Then you can have a circular object. Then what you do is you try to use Boolean operation in creating an image. Okay. So, you try to have A union B, A intersection B. So, you can do so what have, so you can try to take any shapes basic shapes. So, basic shapes is if I know to draw a line, if I know to draw a arc, if I know to draw a point. So, with this combination I can try to do any shapes. So, geometric shapes are to a large extent man made where in which manufacturing is kept as a predominant th thought about it. It represents the shape of a product made from typical geometries like triangle, square, circle. If I know to draw a line, I can draw a square. If I know to draw a line, I can try to draw a, a triangle. If I know to draw a arc, I can know to draw a circle. So, the basic shapes are going to be, I know to draw a, a, a line, I know to draw an arc. A combination of several of this can lead to forming a, a shape. So, in shape it can it can emotionally be passive, it can be uh, aesthetically decorative, it can be spatially active. Today what is happening is we are looking at a product which is aesthetically decorative and spatially active. That means to say it should occupy as small space as possible and still try to convey everything to the customer. If you look at natural design, natural designs are it is all a very complex designs. Today there is a big field which we called about as bio mimicking. It is a big field wherein which we try to understand nature and we try to replicate nature in our products because the nature produced parts or products whatever it is, is done in a very, very uh, very thought provoking way it has been done. There are beautiful colors, attractive colors given, attractive shapes given and all these things are energy efficient shapes. So, people are working more and trying to understand the shapes and generating these shapes in three dimensional is a complex job. The shapes available in the natural shapes are used to make products. So, it is emotionally active, it is uh, aesthetically dynamic and it is a spatial depth is there. So, aesthetically dynamic means the shape changes over a period of time. Here the shape does not change over a period of time until and unless it is it has a wear and tear that is a different story, but a shape of its own does not change. So, at the last one is abstract an indicative or abstract shape showing the product characteristics like logo, cartoons etcetera which are indicator and symbol. For example, if you look at a restroom. The figure which is given there is very abstract which tells you male, men and women. So, that is an abstract way of giving a shape 
such that people by looking at it can understand. For example, if there is a water fountain for drinking, so you just put a fountain there, people understand oh it is. And then if you want to have a not to use a mobile phone, people say please put this, this is a logo or a symbol which people say and then they say please do not use it. So, this is an abstract shape, this is an abstract shape, right? This is an abstract shape for a bird. So, the shape forms, it has um, you, you have the aspects of perception. So, the you can have when I said a, a line, it can be so it is very easy. So, you have a dot, you have a line, you have an arc. A line can be a standing line or a sleeping line. This is standing or a sleeping or you can say horizontal or vertical, right. So, uh, and then the next thing is you can have this lines at an angle. So, now if I know to draw a dot, if I know to draw a line and if I know to maintain an angle in this line, I can try to make a standing line, sleeping line or a, or, uh, or a tilted line. So, with this I can draw any shapes which are simple. Moment I know to draw a curve, I now know to do radius. So, moment I do radiusing with concave convex, I can start making multiple shapes. So, the aspects of perception depends on whether to make vertical lines, horizontal lines or standard angle lines. That is what I said tilted lines. A German philosophist gave the basic principles of form and shape. Okay. If you want to uh, learn more about it, please uh, read this gestanted logics. So, then you also have a positive and a negative shape. Uh, so, this is also theory of perception. So, you see here look at it, this is one shape, this is a triangle, this is a three circles and a triangle. So, if you look at it, this is being converted into this and if you see these, these logos are used in, uh, in a lot of video games. If you look at it, this, these figures bugs are used. Okay. These are different shape forms. The size is also very important. Okay. So, if you go back, we saw dot, line, color, shape, then comes size. The size gives you also a lot of influence. So, the size we have increasing size. So, in increasing size, we have loftiness belong to human measurement. Then we the feelings of, of speciality and dominance by looking at this Eiffel Tower, by looking at the size, we try to get an imp impression and then relative can be obtained by color and contrast also. So, for example, besides it, if I put one more Eiffel Tower or if I draw an Eiffel Tower besides it little, so then the impression comes as this is far away from this. Okay. Though the shape can be the same, the size can be the same, but if I draw small, it, it says that okay, it is little far off. So, the size place, the size of the drawing gives you a feeling of the image. So, the loftiness beyond the beyond human measure, feeling of speciality or dominance and relative can be obtained by color and contrast also are part of size. The creates illusions, these are which creates illusion as I told you earlier, this is big, this is small, this can be far off, this can be heavy, this can be light. So, all these things are been, this is illusion just by looking at the shape, looking at the color, I try to give an interpretation what is that. So, this type of interpretations can be given by choosing the size in a same figure. Mass, the aspect of perception, mass is implied rather than actual. Okay. A size implies normally weight, each piece has got its own weight and then individually weight in the total component. That means to say yellow has its own weight, black has its own weight and this is a total weight. Okay. To accommodate a normal size restraining or expectations can be done, to convey a mood or to provide an emphasis can be done, to create a contrast can be done. All these things gives you a perception for mass. The change, the last point in the basic principles of design, change. Change determines the way how the shape or form, size or mass are getting changed within a product. Okay. So, for example, uh, you uh, 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 when you try to have this is a, assume that this is a full product 
and these are the components at every stage. You can see that at every stage you keep adding and you keep changing the shape or, or the uh, size of the entire component. So, the change determines the way how the form, shape, size or mass are changing within the product. Change can, act, uh, can be actual as in the case of graphics. The, the principle of tempo or rhythm guides the use of the change. The change can be in terms of shape, size, color, value, etc. Okay. So, this is the change. So, basically in this lecture what we have done is we have gone through different principles of visual design. We have gone through di different elements of design. So, which is point, line, color, shape, size, mass and change. All these things are basic elements. So, this in turn directly leads to visual design. Visual design of its own is a big topic. I have just tried to give you a glimpse. What are the possible things in color? What are the possible things in shape? So, with this we will try to come to an end of this lecture. So, the task for you is, so I would like you to take a product. Let us take a prismatic product and this prismatic product is a soap. This soap, if this is the general form of a product, if you try to convert this product into a circular product for the same soap, what will be its impact? What will be its impact? And second thing, you try to take a soap, the same soap. For example, the name of the soap is X, Y, Z, something like that. Try to give your own color, your own size and your own effect okay? and see how you can change the, 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 the impression of the product name on top of a customer. And here, whatever I said, the different I said name, different colors. So, in each thing make 5, 5 things. For example, font size of 12, font size of 14, font size of 15, 13.5, whatever it is. Effect, you can try to give various effects which are available in PowerPoint and see what is, how does it impact you by looking at this, by changing this and then how does it influence the product visual communication. Okay. Uh, with this, I would like to conclude this lecture. Thank you very much.